Isaiah 53 is a very misunderstood and mistranslated passage. Um, obviously, the suffering servant has been used to promote penal substitutionary atonement, when in reality, it isn't that God punished Jesus, it was we did. Um, and there are different renditions. When, when you see Jesus quoting the Old Testament, he's quoting the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament. And the Greek version of the Old Testament has different ways of translating these type of scriptures. So, for instance, in uh, verse 10 of uh, Isaiah 53, it says, it was the Lord's will to crush him with pain by making his life a reparation offering, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, in the Septuagint, uh, which is what Jesus quoted, it actually says it was the Lord's will to purify him or heal him of pain, our pain, the pain that we put on him. Uh, so it's not that he died for our sins. He died because of our sins. So the wages of sin was death. He therefore took death and overcame death to brought life. Therefore, when it comes to, to sicknesses, uh, we see Peter saying that he carried our sicknesses, that we he went to the cross not just for our lost identity, but also for our sickness. So he looked to deal with all of the results that had produced death. The wages of sin is death, not punishment. So that's where we take up your question. Um, that by his scourging we're healed well who scourged him we didn't god didn't you know i didn't but people did as what happened and that scourging or whipping or whatever happened to him was so that we could be fully restored and fully healed so the whole tenor of that is this is not justice so if you read isaiah 52 and then follow it on you realize this is like this is a travesty of justice god by no means did this and he has not punished the suffering servant but people have and the suffering servant was innocent so the innocent is being punished for nothing effectively which was a travesty of justice which is the whole tenor of that passage of course it's read through the lens of penal substitution tell me you take it very differently that being said the reality is that he has provided healing for us because healing brings about immortality which means we don't die so the wages of sin was death sickness leads to death so he wanted to deal with our sicknesses so that doesn't lead to death because he's overcome death through the resurrection so how have i dealt with this well years ago when i did have a, something that needed sick to be healed i uh went through all the bible verses to find out what it said about healing and and health and i found out that god is my healer and then i found out that what jesus did on the cross provided for me to be healed because that means i'm not going to die so there's been a, a progression of revelation around this whole issue that i've come into as things have gone on that a i realized that i can be healed B, that I can live in health, and bit C, I don't have to die at all. Um, and in reality, uh, Jesus, through the cross, has made it possible for me not to die, not just spiritually die and go to heaven, but not physically die as well, which means all death in my body, which is produces, if you like, sickness and disease, uh, has to be eradicated. So I've done this initially through uh, communion, taking communion, taking on the life of God, receiving that life to cleanse my whole being, my spirit, soul, body, completely cleansed by the life of God by partaking in his life, eating his flesh, drinking his blood, figuratively meaning partaking of his life and receiving that life so I don't need to die. So I applied that by taking the communion, taking on life, seeing that transform my dna transform any area of death in me whether that be genetic or any other aspect of death uh, in me so i can live an abundant life therefore abundant life is living in health and wholeness and living until i finish whatever i need to do and then being translated if that's the case so i don't need to die physically which is the bigger issue here which is really immortality so what I've done is 
partake of that communion, partake of that life, and then begin to live in that communion. So constantly live in the life of God. So I have living water, rivers of living water flowing in my innermost being from, from the source of life, from the tree of life, flowing through the tree of life, flowing into me all of the time, bringing about my health and wholeness by the energy and the life that's coming through him to me uh, and i now live in that health and wholeness so that rivers of water flow from my innermost being so they provide an atmosphere around my life of health and wholeness and life and i draw from that life so i draw from the quantum field the energy that god has created for this whole universe to be sustained that life can sustain me and i can see it as rivers of living water i could see it as light i could see it as energy i could see it as spirit all of those things are ways of seeing that i live in an environment that is supposed to be self healing um, restoring ensuring that i live uh, in a way which god intended and that was that the body would restore itself and heal itself and repair itself now there are things that go wrong in the body um because of death being within the body and therefore aging as a result of that stops the body functioning as it was intended so the body is supposed to communicate to itself through to the immune system of which bits of the body need to be repaired which need to be restored and which need to be replaced um, and therefore that operates in the mitochondria of the cells and that communication uh, apparently sort of slows down or fails to work as we get older so we need to make sure that our cells are communicating so i can communicate that to my body um, and i can communicate with the cells of my body and remind my body of its immortal state and i can speak to my body in that way live in that communion and fellowship of life and immortality and live in that atmosphere that will be my thoughts my intentions aligned to god's thoughts and intentions but there are things also you can do to help with that um, there's a liquid you can drink called a seer um, which actually restores the cell's ability to repair themselves and you can get a, a gel called Renew Gel, which I've seen miraculously restore burns uh, and do things very, very quickly because it's designed to cause the body to self-repair and self-heal efficiently and effectively. Now, that, I think, is a transitionary thing until we can begin to think and function in health and immortality in our own thinking, in our own mind, and begin to live in that environment where health and wholeness and life and immortality are the norm and so you know i've had various stages along the way of realizing you know god desires me to live in health that god desires me to be immortal to therefore how does that function therefore i take on that life therefore now every time i breathe communion for me has gone from you know something i did to something that i now am so i'm in communion with life i am partaking in life so when i breathe in i'm breathing in life just as god breathed into adam and he became a living being i am breathing in the life of god i am living in rarefied air if you like i'm living breathing in life breathing in energy breathing in wholeness and that's the fellowship i live in that is in a sense where i live in communion with life and i have no communion or agreement with death with sickness with disease now i know it takes time for this to become uh, something that we can be live in and not try and attain this is my reality this is the reality i live in now of course at times i have to focus that intention in my body like you mentioned accidents and various things i i've had accidents i've had accidents in fact i had a, an accident this week in which i slipped on a slippery paving stone um went up in the air came down and my whole side landed on the, the edge of a railway sleeper or a sleeper and really really hurt 
And therefore I'm having to focus a basically apologizing to my body for that accident. Although I couldn't say it was my fault and I wasn't really being in any way uh, careless. It was just slippy and I didn't realize, uh, but I still engage my body. Now I'm communicating with my body for the removal of the pain. Now pain in a sense is something that says something's wrong. So at the moment, my ribs um, all the way down my back are, uh, well, my ribs are very, very sore, but I'm working with my body for its restoration. But I have to be sensible. There are some things that I think, okay, I'm going to push through this and I'm just going to ignore it and I'm going to get on with it. Then there are times where I think, no, I need to rest now. I need to take and give my time body to repair and to restore itself and to repair the damage done to probably my ribs and intercostal muscles and all around that area. So I focus my intention on that area and I begin to choose the reality that my body will come into a re restored, repaired, healthy state. But it sometimes takes time. You can have a miracle in which all of the pain goes and all of the problem goes, or you can work with your body in your thinking uh, and in the, your positive mental attitude in choosing restoration and choosing health and wholeness and choosing the reality that you will come into a whole state. And Jesus healed people in different ways. One of the words used for healing was therapeuo, which is what where we get therapy from, and that's process. So sometimes there's a process, sometimes it's instant. Obviously, we'd all prefer it to be instant, but sometimes we've got to work the process. Coming to agreement, you know, yes, I've done court cases and things with my body years ago, uh, apologized and did all that uh, so that my body would have no offense against me and therefore my body would be working in cooperation with me because I'm one, body, soul and spirit, I'm one. You know? so, but it is a process and it is a, a thing of thinking and realizing that what he did on the cross was to bring me into the wholeness of life and what happened on the cross was an injustice because he didn't deserve to go to the cross and god didn't do any of that stuff to him on the cross man did but he was representing man and taking man's desire for punishment and therefore brought about the resurrection and overcame death and therefore to overcome death you have to overcome sickness and he overcame sickness so that we could live in the abundance of life. Um, so I would encourage you just to continue with communion. See communion as a state of being. So every breath that you take, you're receiving life and energy and health and wholeness. And just see that begin to bring about the changes in your physical body to align with what the truth is of him actually taking all of the associations of death and giving us abundant life. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.